Hey, I want to thank you for being a part of the conversation. This is Play It Forward. These are real people, real stories. The struggle to play it forward. Episode number 574 is with naturalist Chris Tompkins from the film Wildlife. I'm really well. Nice to hear your voice. Well, it's nice to hear your voice because, you know, you don't meet too many people who love uh, wildlife and, and, and nature like we do. Because, I mean, it just seems to be a, a dying breed. And, and, and for you to be a part of wildlife, I mean, this, this is amazing because it's, it's going to serve as a powerful message. Well, I hope so. That, that's the idea of, of doing the film is inspiring people out there at any level to go protect nature wherever it is. So where were you in life when you decided to start protecting nature? Because I remember being up in Montana and, and my family, were, they were hunters and I just wouldn't do it. And I would sit there in that forest and I would say, I'm gonna, I vow to protect you. I vow to protect you. And to this day, I, I, I've been planted 1,700 trees in, in my area, which has created a forest here in South Charlotte, North Carolina. I, I just, what, what happened in your life? Oh, my God. Okay, well, somebody needs to make a, a film about you. <laughs> Maybe, you know, I, um, I, I, I want writers of two or three generations from now to step into this forest, and then they can do it then, because right, it, it's still just a baby. And I, and I lo- even though they're 30 feet tall, it's still just a baby. Yes, but watching your babies grow, as we all know, is, is, oh, uh, oh. is a great sport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, I was working with Yvonne Chouinard and running Patagonia Company, and I had been doing this since the moment I stepped out of college, so 21 years old, and we were climbers, ski racers, um, really outdoors people, and it was really Yvonne, I think, in the early 70s, actually, who began to say, that things were really happening and they were happening in a in a way in nature that was very dangerous and happening very fast. Of course, now we know all of this seems quite evident, except the velocity now has kicked up enormously um, since we first started talking about it. And um, I ran into Doug Tompkins, who would become my husband, and he had just left his working life to go... Uh, spend the last third of his life out in the wild protecting nature. Mm -hmm. And so the timing was perfect. We both wanted something else beyond our our working lives to change our lives 180 degrees. And it was pretty serendipitous if I look up, you know, I look at it now. And uh, that's what we did. We just moved out of the United States to down to Chile and um, then to Argentina and began uh, um, accumulating large tracts of land in key areas, a lot of the jewels of the country, and buying it and then dedicating it and donating it back to the citizens of Chile and in Argentina, to the Argentines. Wow, and that's what we've been doing for the last thirty years. Oh, such a <laughs> such a calling, and and to be in that right place at the right moment. I mean, to be able to create Ooh. national parks in South America, and I mean, we're Americans, we're spoiled by that. But but to do it in other areas around the world. Well, that's right. Although we have to remember that both Chile and Argentina had national park systems when we started, so it wasn't as though we created that. Um, form of protection in the country. Mm -hmm. It was already there. In fact, Argentina, I think, is the third oldest national park system in the world behind Australia and Canada, maybe the U.S. And um, and Chile's, the first one was in 1926. So, but it wasn't an active or proactive idea that individuals could amass land and then turn them over so that all are welcome, just like you see in Yellowstone and other national parks that we're all used to. Don't you love the vibration of the land when you go into any national park, such as Yellowstone or even down there in South America, in the, in the way that it, it, there, there's such a relationship? Because, I mean, I, I have trees that have been a part of my life for 30 years, and, and to, to go sit with wow. them or, or to go sit next to a rock or to be with the turtles. I mean, they, it's just it's, you learn that it's not about the human. It's about the atmosphere. 
Well, I think you're absolutely right. And, and being from the United States, when I walk into Yellowstone or one of the parks here, you know, I can pull my suspenders and say to myself, this is, I'm one of the owners, the guardians yes. of this park. Yeah. Because as Americans, we're responsible for our national parks. If they're being mistreated, you have to stand up and help do something about it. And I see this over and over again with Chileans and the Argentines, that they, we take these places as our, as our own, and they do belong to us. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that makes a huge difference to how we see and how we defend these territories. The movie I really do. The movie we're talking about is Wildlife, which is going to be in theaters, and people need to experience it in the theater with that gigantic big screen. And I, and I realize it's going to be on Disney Plus and Hulu and, and National Geo, but I really want to put listeners in those seats because this is the kind of stuff that changes people's lives. This is we had this at, when I was a kid, and and it just it just I loved watching the shows about bears and about you know icebergs and things, and so that's why this is so special because you're the one that's doing it right now. <laughs> well, we're lucky, aren't we, to yeah. be able to do these things. Yeah. And and I agree with you. If anybody can still see it inside a theater, please go and see it because it's a lot of uh, aerial photography shot by the same guy who did Top Gun. Oh, wow. It has, it's a beautiful film besides the content and the story, which I'm, of course, personally very proud of. But it's the beauty of the film that is just without par amazing what it, i can say that because i didn't shoot it <laughs> yeah but you were part of it though in in a way of bringing it to life yeah and, no it's our story it's our it's our story that's for sure now to share mm -hmm. your story i i you know i'm one of those creative people that when you release your story that means that your heart becomes clear and that means that you're going to grow in in newer directions to help protect and or build other things what what are you feeling well you know we never have stopped um ever since we made the the last donation the eight perks all at once um you know we just never stopped. We were designing new ideas. We've taken on what's called rewilding, bringing back species where we work who have gone missing, have yeah. been extincted in that territory. And that's really changed our life, uh, conservation life, forever. Wow. Wow. So we've never stopped working. And um, we have uh, between Chile... Uh, Rewilding Chile and rewilding Argentina. There are huge projects on the coastline and the interior. Uh, the jaguars are back. Oh. Giant anteaters working on giant otters, ocelots, puma. So, yeah, our work just keeps expanding. And, um, you know, I'm the oldest one of the bunch, so uh, <laughs> I'm going to do this. As long as I can, I hope till the end of my life. So <laughs> I'm pretty clear about the trajectory of the work itself and the teams who are who are responsible for all the projects now. Wow. You've got to come back to this show anytime in the future so we can talk more about nature, about, you know, national parks and the creation and the continuation of, of, of Mother Nature in general. I would be delighted. Excellent. Anytime. You, Just let me know. You'd be brilliant today, okay? okay? Okay. You too. Okay, bye bye. And all the best. Yes, ma'am. Bye bye.